Welcome back to the channel guys. Uh, I've been driving my car a lot recently and noticed I had some kind of slower spool of the turbo than what I'm looking for. And one thing that I haven't done on this car yet is verify the ignition timing, which is an important step to do um, if you're on an aftermarket ECU. So today I'm going to show you guys real quick how to do that. The tools we're going to use to do this are a, a metal coat hanger. This is actually what we are going to fashion our timing pointer out of. Um, you're going to need a timing light. This is just a Harbor Freight Special. It's nothing uh, too expensive. I think it's about 30 bucks. Um, you're going to need a marker of some sort. I like to use these grease pencils for tires. I think they're easy to see on the balancer. Um, you can use a flathead screwdriver. So as long as you disable the valve so they don't get in your way, you can shove this down the spark plug hole. And when it reaches as high as it will, that's where TDC is. Or if you have one laying around, uh, like I do, I have one of these um, Amazon boroscopes that plugs into my phone. So I can actually just put this in the spark plug hole and look down and see when the piston is at top dead center. If you have aftermarket plug wires like this one here that has the really thick outer casing, uh, these tend not to work too well with the timing light. Usually it can't pick it up through it. So just go to your junkyard and pick up a factory one off of like a Silverado or something. Um, nothing crazy. I mean, this one cost me a buck, so no big deal. All right, so we're going to pull the cylinder one spark plug, and then I'm going to toss my boroscope in there and record a video of me putting it at top dead center, and we'll go from there. So as you can see in that video, I went ahead and rotated the engine clockwise until the piston was at the top with both valves closed, uh, which we're at now, which means that cylinder one is at TDC. So now you need to go down and fashion your timing pointer. What I did was clip uh, just this long straight part out, uh, wrap it down here around one of the bolts of the block, and then pointed it directly at my balancer. Now you'll see I made my mark here. Um, with my grease pencil so it doesn't matter if your pointer is on the side or on the top wherever you mark it right now is where tdc is so now we have a pointer we have a good mark where tdc is and now we can lock the timing out in the holly and point a timing gun at it okay so we're in the holly software we downloaded from the ecu and we are in usb link and you're going to come in here to your idle settings and you're going to disable idle spark and what this is going to do is it's going to stop it from moving the timing back and forth and it's going to stay exactly where it is on the graph. So now we're going to go ahead and start the car. Make sure that the wherever it is in the uh, timing table will run. Uh, it should be somewhere right here in this 18 degree mark for me. And it should run pretty smooth. And then as long as it's running smooth, we can go ahead and shoot the timing light at it. Got my timing light hooked up, so I got power, I have ground, and I have my inductive lead on cylinder one here. I have my timing light ran down there. Uh, doing it on the top is obviously easier, but I got all this stuff in the way, it makes it hard to see, so I just had to run the wires down there. So I'm going to go ahead and start the car and figure out what it's idling at. You can pull up this data logger screen and look right here in the second box where it says ignition timing. So we should land in that 18 degree area, and then we are going to take our timing light and set the dial on the back to 18 degrees, point it at it, and our mark should line up. It might have been a little hard to tell in that video, but with our Holly screen showing we were at 18 degrees and our timing light set at 18 degrees, we were able to see that our mark was perfectly on our pointer, which means our ignition timing is good. So when the computer says it's at 18 degrees, it is actually at 18 degrees. As far as the slow spool goes, uh, I actually posted in Sloppy Mechanics about this. Um, and there's a number of factors to it, but one of them is this timing table for my car is a little uh, worse for wear. Uh, it shouldn't really look like this. It looks kind of messed up and it actually can be uh, causing some slow spool. Um, there's a guy in that page, uh, Blood Motorsports is the dude's company, and he is going through and making me a revised timing table in tune to see if we can get that spool a little bit better. So I'll update you guys with that. But as far as setting the ignition timing, it's pretty easy, it only takes about 30 minutes, and it's worth it to do anytime you're running an aftermarket ECU. So if you shot your ignition timing with the gun and it didn't line up, uh, unlike mine, uh, no worries, um, it can be fixed. 
So on the back of these guns, they do have a dial that you can turn kind of either which way. So if you shoot it and the ECU says it's 18 degrees and you have it at 18 degrees and it doesn't line up, uh, you can move this back and forth to see where it lines up. So if it lines up at say 20 degrees, you know that your ignition is two degrees advanced from where it's supposed to be. And if you turn it back to say 10 degrees and it lines up, you know that your ignition is retarded eight degrees. So what you can do from here is you can go into your aftermarket ECU and set up an offset table. Um, and you can either add or subtract the amount of timing you need to make your ignition timing perfect so that the car is actually following your ignition table and the timing it says on the table is the timing the engine is seeing. But that's going to be it for today. You guys could like and subscribe and leave a comment if you'd like. I'll see you guys in the next one.